The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me. Whoa, whoa, I did something wrong there. Another exciting day. Uh, what else do we have going on here? I messed that up. So let's go ahead and uh, uh, get to that, get everything up. Okay, so we're back up. And I just had a few technical problems leading into the show. We're off uh, 10 points in the S&P cash. Volume is fairly light. And I'm thinking that uh, it's uh, a lot of people just kind of scratching their heads today, but we're only doing about four, uh, 3.5 billion shares. There's been no volume on the way up. No volume on the way down. Options continue to show pressure into uh, Microsoft's earnings tomorrow night. Uh, why I will not be betting on a lower price. Uh, I say at least from the options point of view, uh, they say that there's only a 10% chance that it close higher uh, tomorrow than it does today. And uh, on Friday, uh, they about 80% think it's going to be down from a few bucks to 10 bucks. So there just isn't a whole lot uh, going on here. We did have earnings out before the bell, uh, but no big shakes, uh, dollar up, dollar down. I think there was only one that actually had any kind of uh, real action. And I think that was Comerica CMA. Take a quick look at that. Uh, yeah, it was down. 5% at one point, it's down 3.5%. Uh, but there just isn't any real juice to uh, go higher or go lower. Uh, but I do think we're in that part of the summer where uh, we could just see selling because uh, there is nobody else to buy the top in this market. Um, the option market makers did kind of significantly move up the bottom side of the projection, uh, but it was so low that uh, we would be surprised if they did not. But uh, let's see what we got here. Oh, that's what I wanted to do. Today is Tuesday most of the day, or yesterday, wasn't it? Let's see, there we go. Uh, I will pop this up. Um, they were looking for the possibility of 100 points lower in the S&P cash, uh, and of course, uh, 10 points lower in the sp uh, spies themselves. Um, they moved down the upside uh, to uh, about what we're at now, which means that uh, a, uh, there's about a 10% chance that we close higher than 300 on the SPIs. Uh, they also have uh, basically down to, well, let's call it uh, uh, 225 or 290, uh, excuse me, 292 and a half would be the way it would work out in the uh, SPIs themselves. Um, that's about where they think the low end is. So they think that on the worst case scenario right now, uh, that if the market took a hit for Microsoft on for, on Friday, Thursday after the bell on earnings, I'm assuming it's Microsoft. Maybe there's something else out there I'm unaware of, but Microsoft's chart is probably, um, besides uh, Western Digital, uh, which we talked about uh, uh, buying puts on it and covering them a little yesterday. Saw a lot of action in them trying to uh, fill those back up. But, uh, and maybe they'll get an option or get uh, the ability to hold that up a little bit more into expiration. Probably should have gone for the August in it, too. It's the only position we had that actually expired this week. Uh, but the rest of the market, um, just very tough, light volume, but it could continue for a while. Uh, generally, these kind of sell-offs in the summer that have no volume uh, can go on for a little bit, but I just don't see a lot of people uh, standing up and buying any of the earnings stocks the last couple of days to any kind of extent. Uh, no real big surprises to the upside, no real big surprises to the downside. And generally, that means that a market's pretty fair valued in the opinion of the composite trader. That was an idea of Wyckoff and Jesse Livermore, that there was kind of a, the average Joe that owns shares. Um, if you wanted to think of, of that guy, he called him the composite man. 
Uh, but the composite uh, of the market, I guess the wisdom of the crowd is another way to say it. Um, so you basically have a 292 and a half uh, as the kind of bottom side of it. That uh, Anybody that's written or read my article from uh, 2004 in Stocks and Commodities, the numbers have changed in some of the things that uh, the way that they work. Um, back then, it was like uh, getting uh, the uh, uh, race results for tomorrow's race today. Uh, they were so good for about two or three years. And uh, in fact, Tom O'Brien talks about sending uh, several of his kids to college on those because they were just so transparent back at the time. Uh, much tougher now, but um, in three, four months a year, uh, they are a laser in illuminating at least the bias into options expiration. Uh, what else do we have out here that we want to talk about today? I think we're just kind of now uh, going to wait around for the earnings. Uh, nothing really exciting, I think, tonight. Let's take a look here. Um, I mean, we got Netflix. Uh, that always kind of looked weak to me. We'll uh, bring up the uh, options on them and see if there's anything. They tell us uh, IBM. Uh, is that right? Yeah, the 17th. Um, but I, I don't know. Netflix always has looked to me like some a company that's spending far too much money uh, in foreign markets that return not that much. And they've lost their cachet of uh, great titles uh, that are coming out. Um, and they've been... I think this is the last season for Stranger Things. I don't think there's anything after this. Uh, and they really haven't had a big hit like that for two years. So, uh, you know, the, and I was, there's somebody in the den that I talk to every, all the time. He loves uh, looking at all these uh, theater companies and companies in uh, making movies. And just all my experience of being out in Hollywood for 10 years in special effects was this. They were always just one movie away from going bankrupt. And I never really liked being in it. Um, the people they hired for the, the hire the books uh, were always crooks and frauds. Uh, they were always screwing everybody over. I wasn't surprised to find out that uh, there was a television show called Bones on for uh, a while that uh, the two uh, actors that led the show ended up with $170 million from Fox. And that's just one of the ones we know about. There's probably 10 others uh, from CBS, NBC, and ABC uh, of similar ilk. I remember even back in the uh, 70s that the Rockford Files went off the air because they cheated him out of a whole bunch of money, and it took him almost 15 years, uh, and he ended up, I think, with $15 million. Uh, Jim Rockford. I always liked him. Jim Rockford, leave your message at the town. Uh, I'm wandering around out here uh, waiting for the break. We'll talk about uh, history. We'll get into some charts. And, uh, and we'll have a good day. But, uh, I don't. I think you can uh, be cat. I don't think you can be long. Really good be back in a If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. 
The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in a Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And we're back. I blew this chart up. Uh, you can always email me at... Uh, path at tfnn.com and you can ask any questions you want as you said we'll look through this but options give us uh, one of the few uh, few views that can't really be disguised to any extent uh, you can if you're trying to hide stuff you can you know use options on one side and futures on the other to have kind of a synthetic position uh, but of course you're taking a lot more risk on the futures uh, than you are on the options, but you could sell both. Uh, there's a hundred different ways to skin a cat with options. Um, I like to keep it simple, and uh, the, I rarely bet on spreads because generally the VIG on both sides of them eats you up, and you never really make that much money. Everybody I always talk to that always says, you know, I, I uh, sell these, it just never seems to make much money at the end of the year. Now, maybe... It's different. Maybe there's somebody else. I just don't run into many people. I like to use options to reduce risk, not put more on. And generally, that's what a lot of the condors and everything out actually do. They limit your upside significantly. Uh, and uh, so I tend to buy options in the last week of expiration uh, when they're fairly cheap. And look, uh, like we said yesterday, we had the 55 uh, puts in uh, WDC. Uh, I think maybe on the radio yesterday, I may have said Qualcomm, but uh, I had Qualcomm on the mind for some reason yesterday. And uh, been under the weather a little bit the last couple of days. So, eh, don't drive angry. That's what Groundhog uh, Day taught us. Uh, but uh, like I said, you, you're basically down here pretty close to. 292, uh, which is at the point where they don't think it's really going that, uh, going to go any lower than that. But their risk uh, all the way from about, well, from right out, eh, let's call it about uh, 20 points lower on the cash, maybe uh, two or three points lower is what they're thinking that the 50% uh, of the time it would uh, close at, uh, let's call it 296, 297 in the SPY. So a little lower out here. Uh, when we get into options for August, uh, continue uh, selling is what they suspect that we're going to have, uh, but eh, we'll see. Uh, anyway, we're going to talk about Microsoft real quick. Let's take a quick look at that um, and get it over here. 
and then we'll get into some futures. As I ramble and digress again today, um, and Microsoft, as I said, they're, I mean, if you look at uh, 137 or something uh, that it closed at yesterday uh, when the options closed, they really think that it is closing lower to more, uh, tomorrow. Uh, the, probably the worst of the close would be something around 128. Now, again, maybe they've got inside information, maybe they don't. Uh, but the market does think that this will be a bridge too far for Microsoft. And so I will be sitting on my hands in short positions. Uh, what else is going on out here? Well, we've got a little bit of history and then we'll move on. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. And what's uh, going on out here? Uh, history. Oh, on uh, this day in 1955, Disneyland, Walt Disney's metropolis of nostalgia, fantasy, and futurism, opens, uh, opens today. Uh, the 17 million theme park was built on 160 acres of former orange groves in Anaheim, California, and soon brought in staggering profits. Today, Disneyland hosts more than 14 million visitors a year who spend close to $3 billion. And, of course, uh, Disneyland won't be the same. Uh, of course, uh, the Me Too uh, folks got the uh, drunken sailor uh, chasing the uh, uh, bar waitress around. I don't think you can use the actual term anymore again. Uh, or I'd be uh, inundated by me twos. Uh, but uh, I don't think I could go back to it after that. That was, I think that may be the most iconic thing that I remember about going to Disneyland. Of course, I went to it in, uh, I think, February or January. It had to be right at the beginning of the year because I'd lived my entire life in Hawaii till I was 10. And we came back on a steamship and, uh, the first thing we did is got off, first time I'd ever remember setting foot on uh, the uh, lower 48 that lived all my life on Hawaii. But uh, pretty interesting to see, um, you know, uh, something that, you know, we lived on an island that didn't have much. Uh, see, something like Disneyland was uh, rather amazing for a 10-year-old boy. Yeah, but uh, I do digress. We'll move on here. Start looking at some charts. Uh, question in the den. I did you believe in the uh, foreshadowing uh, W? Yeah, we did last week. I actually we did by the puts, I think, on Friday. Was it Thursday or Friday? The 55 puts. Anyway, we covered those yesterday. Um, could have still covered them today. Uh, but I think it's going to probably close at 52.50. That's on uh, WDC. Uh, to, to, to what else do we have? Oh, we've got to bring up the charts. Um, let's take a quick look at Microsoft because that is it. We'll look at Netflix. Um, again, Microsoft closing under the 3 by 3 yesterday, which not good uh, going into earnings. Uh, today, uh, still holding below that. A lot of people not wanting to get all froggy in front of earnings. Uh, but uh, anywhere from a couple bucks to maybe 10 bucks lower 128 that gap does look like what the option market makers think that the low will be tomorrow or i mean on friday when they come back uh after the bell tonight of course we've got netflix uh, i was kind of uh, opining on that in a kind of uh, stream of consciousness rant that these guys are paying far too much for content in third world countries uh, that probably will not bring this back. Now, that it's great to be a multinational company. question is whether or not uh, throwing $30 million at a movie uh, for a country that's one-tenth the size or maybe one-fifth the size of the United States makes the same uh, economic sense. Um, but, you know, they make some fairly good movies, uh, but they've changed... Their modus operandi, which I think opens them up to a lot of competition, and that is that they're spending far more money right now on stand-up specials uh, than actual new products that are going to move along. Same thing with HBO. What do they do now with uh, now that Game of Thrones is over? Is there anything that really takes over? And that's why these uh, movie uh, 
production houses and theaters have such feast and famine. They continue to do the same thing over and over again until no one wants to see it anymore. And then, surprise, uh, it's a wasteland uh, desert, a empty house at the theater. Uh, but uh, you certainly have a weakness already in Netflix uh, coming uh, around. I don't know if uh, this is enough off the top already, uh, but I wouldn't be suspecting that this thing really has a lot of upside I think a lot of people are just hoping it doesn't have a lot of downside. Uh, eh, we'll be back in just a minute. Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates to my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're going to talk a little bit more about earnings because that's really what's going to short-term drive the market. Um, and uh, so the other one out after the bell tonight, uh, that will probably draw a little bit of attention is IBM. Uh, this one looks like one of the weakest in the markets. I would not be surprised for them to drop the chalupa uh, out here after the bell tonight. Um, this one's probably a little early, uh, easier to see. Of course, they've completed the uh, Red Hat acquisition a few weeks ago, uh, and that may temporarily make the books look better. But I don't think that the company's any healthier whatsoever. Uh, energy has been uh, fairly good off the 105.94 low on December 26th 
of last year up to the 145.39 high of April 16th. Pulled back on fairly light energy, but you went up on even lighter energy back up to this high. And I just don't think, uh, well, there may be enough shorts to temporarily run this higher. And you had 15, 16% ye yesterday, day before, and it's kind of in that range, 17%. Uh, back on the 9th of this month, you had 30% of the shares shorted. That was kind of the big deal. And that was down at 140.47. So that lets you know kind of where the, the uh, how many shorts are on the wrong side of that. Uh, on the monthly, you, you really don't have that many uh, short positions on the longer term. Uh, with the uh, short interest being, what is that? Uh, looks like uh, 15, a little 15 million shares. So, eh, that's uh, not very much if those numbers are actually correct. Seems awful low on IBM, but maybe that's it. Certainly, um, the huge shorting that we saw last week on that... Uh, the 9th of July um, hasn't paid off quite yet, uh, but that's where break even is for those folks that decided to dive on the grenade before earnings. I'm not a big fan of that. I'd much rather uh, see action come a different way. Let's see what else do we have out here that I wanted to talk about today. Uh, eBay been kind of quiet. I thought maybe they may have some weakness in last earnings, but no, they actually did fairly well. Uh, this thing, they ran the shorts earlier today, which is always a uh, kind of dark cloud uh, over earnings when you think that they're out after the bell tonight. Got to $41.44 as they ran the shorts uh, as fast as they could, and then uh, tucked and covered. A little uh, 50s Cold War lingo there for you, if you live in Lutz, Florida. Uh, down on heavy, uh, I wouldn't say heavy volume, but as good as yesterday, but kind of very interesting to see the wild swings out here uh, pre-earnings. Uh, another company that uh, is kind of a canary in the coal mine, I don't really trade it, uh, but I do find it interesting. Uh, this thing looks like it's going to close below the 3 by 3 displaced moving average today going into earnings. Uh, but this uh, United Rentals rents a lot of uh, building equipment, uh, and uh, this is going to tell us exactly, or they're going to tell us exactly how many people are really building things and what their future looks like over the next three months as people look for more stuff. Uh, used to be a kind of a big stock uh, for earnings, not so much anymore. Uh, Alcoa also after the bell, but I don't see anything in it. Uh, let's see what else we have. Uh, and that's it for today. Now, as we said, uh, tomorrow after the bell, we've got Microsoft. Uh, tomorrow morning, uh, we go into United Healthcare, an H. Take a quick look at that. This one uh, actually a little stronger than the best volume, a little bit better uh, coming back uh, off the uh, this gap up on the 11th of July. Uh, that gap had about uh, 10.3 million shares. You're back in. Um, Volume's been kind of light the last three or four days waiting for earnings. Uh, the downside is that 272, 275 is probably heavy resistance. Uh, support comes in at about 250. So I can't see uh, a lot of reasons to either be long because you don't have that much on the upside. Uh, and it doesn't look that bearish, uh, but you do have in the chart a lot of downside. Uh, we also have Morgan Stanley. Dean Witter, what else were they? I'm sure their name is incredibly long by now. Um, it closed below the three by three going into earnings tomorrow morning. Uh, not a lot of volume so far, but it, it does look like if it closes here, it will be a fairly bearish tone going into earnings in the morning. Uh, $40.43 is the last major low on June 3rd. I think uh, if they disappoint, that's where you should look for a uh, huge resistance in this gap down going back to the 13th of May. Uh, that had about 16.5 million shares. So, you know, it, trading around 44 bucks, uh, if they did real well, maybe 46 bucks on the upside, 
uh, but $40 on the downside. So I can't say that you'd want to short that stock, but I tell you what, there's just not much uh, gravy left in that trade, either up or down. Uh, of course, the Microsoft of Europe uh, also tomorrow morning. Uh, that is SAP. It's closed uh, below the 3x3 three three, uh, back on the 9th, and it's been trending lower back into this. Support comes in at 130, resistance at uh, basically 140. Again, risk reward pretty horrible because you don't have that much on the upside and you got a lot on the downside. Not a lot of uh, reason to pull the trigger pre earnings on those. Uh, what else do we have? And Philip Morris, a bunch of these. I don't think there's much going on there. Uh, in the uh, SMHs, uh, you will have some action tomorrow morning on Taiwan semiconductors. Uh, this thing, of course, uh, is an ADR, and that's why you get all the kind of gappy behavior that are that's really in this. Uh, but in Taiwan semiconductor, uh, you know, you're right up against resistance at $42 to $43. Uh, at best, maybe get to 44. Uh, big gap uh, on the downside, back down to 40 dollars. Again, this thing doesn't have wide ranges, but does have problems. Uh, a, uh, not a man. Um, AMD uh, has looked particularly vulnerable to me. Uh, it's into a 304 million share high at September 13th at 34 dollars and 14 cents. Got into it a couple of days ago with basically 67 million shares. So, uh, and what is that? About 28% of the volume of that September 13, 2018 high. Um, again, I'm wondering what they're going to say. They're getting into a price war with Intel and NVIDIA both. And generally, while you can get more market share, I don't understand uh, price wars. Uh, in the context of stock price. It may make sense for the company strategically, uh, but generally uh, investors shy away from these companies uh, when it's shown that margins start dipping. And I think that's kind of what we're looking at. And maybe this is about as good as uh, Advanced Micro does. I mean, it was two bucks just a few years ago. We'll be back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors.
are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And uh, what else do we have going on out here? Um, again, we had a lot of these stocks as soon as they break right now. This is a sign of a brittle market. Uh, Kansas City Southern, uh, just a, a big drop. I think they have earnings on Friday. Also, Friday morning, we have uh, American Express. Um, again, a lot of these are just running out of steam. Um, sitting on the three by three, but not closing below it today is American Express. So you've got to watch that one uh, through tomorrow. Uh, also on Friday, we got a little bit of oil and crude with uh, SLB, which is Schlumberger. And uh, it cracked below yesterday, closed below. And now you have the continuation uh, 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 again uh, on the downside. Not a lot of volume so far. But uh, again, I'm not expecting the end of the world in a pullback. I just think that we pull back maybe through the end of the summer, and that sets up uh, the ability to have a, a, a uh, fall rally. Uh, but we got up to these highs, didn't have the juice to break it. So you're going to get a pullback. Um, I understand the uh, belief to always say that the sky's falling and be a perma bear. Uh, but. Uh, it just seems the government is uh, always there to put another finger in the dike uh, when it starts to leak. But, you know, they let it leak a little bit. They let people get a little scared, and then they come back to uh, form up. But uh, I think that maybe is what we're looking for is the last big hurrah before the election season starts. Uh, but uh, yeah, maybe that gets done through this summer, and then we get set up for the next big rally. In the meantime, I think we could see a long and protected sell-off uh, until we find some kind of uh, event that actually puts in a decent low that makes everybody think uh, that it's time to buy again. But uh, again, too many of these stocks, we've been talking about it for a while, uh, that are just setting up. As soon as they close now, below the 3 by 3 the next day they have a big drop uh, price-wise. And... Uh, uh, that's not a good sign for the general market itself. Uh, also on Friday, we have Cleveland Cliffs. And it's just hanging around $11 mark. Um, I don't see how you're just holding up there. And of course, there's no real way to see, it, or there's nothing I see in that for earnings. Uh, Vail looks kind of the exact same, except far lighter volume back at this uh, $13.98 uh, high on March 13th. You got into that yesterday. Hasn't closed below anything. Uh, but, of course, uh, all the uh, last time we checked on Vail, all these uh, executives were all looking at jail time uh, from that dam break. And I don't know if much has changed, and I haven't spent a lot of time. Um, doesn't look like it's going to nothing, but does look like it's up on nothing. So I don't see anything that really suggests that this thing's going much further. When we get into next week, Halliburton again on the oil front uh, next Monday. Uh, and that's about it. We've got some shipping stocks 
that are basically penny stocks uh, that morning. Uh, after the bell on Monday, we've got Whirlpool uh, and Logitech. Uh, but again, those Whirlpool probably have a better opportunity uh, to tell us about the uh, uh, the Dow and those kind of stocks, but I don't think there's a lot going on in that. Uh, Tuesday next week, we get into Coca-Cola before the bell on Tuesday. Lockheed Martin, Biogen, United Technologies, Harley-Davidson, JetBlue, Kimberly, Clark, Hasbro, uh, Sherwin, Williams, Stanley, Black & Decker, ATI, Polaris Industries. So uh, it's going to be hot and heavy for a while. Uh, our old buddy we haven't looked at for a while in SNAP uh, is after the bell next Tuesday. Uh, and that one actually uh, closed below the 3 by 3 uh, yesterday and continued on uh, with a little bit of weakness today, not a whole lot. Uh, I would suspect that at best you could hope for support somewhere around 14 bucks. Uh, also, after the bell on that day, uh, on uh, next Tuesday, we've got Visa. Come on, Mr. Visa. Do, 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 do. There we go. Um, and just light volume, but it did close below the 3x3. Three three. That's starting to tell you that there is some downside weakness in the market. Also, next Tuesday after the bell, we've got Chipotle. Uh, and again, huge short interest in this. Uh, my guess is that this stock will... Uh, isn't any better than it was a year ago. Uh, and you're always one uh, day away from uh, Montezuma's revenge and the end of the company if it happens again. Uh, but I, I don't know. It seems like they've done a little bit better. Uh, but I don't hear a lot about it, although the price is way back up after that huge move back in February where it looked like the company was being turned around. Uh, and you've got a pretty nice move up here. You just haven't had any volume really since uh, back in uh, the beginning of, uh, of June. So it's kind of kind up there. I don't know if this thing's going to surprise this quarter, but my guess is in the next, at least by the next quarter, uh, the reality is probably going to be closer to somewhere between uh, the price today and the, about $550, that big gap down below, which I think eventually is going to get filled. Uh, restaurant stocks, especially that one, I've just driven by them and they're not busy like they used to be. Now, maybe that's just an issue down here in Tampa, but I'll watch closely or more closely then. You can give me a call at 877-927-6648. You can uh, email me at path at tfnn.com. And, of course, you can always drop a message in the den. What else do we have? Uh, we, uh, iRobot, man, that thing uh, on earnings is a little rocket. Let's take a look, quick look at that one. Um, of course, it went up to the moon and then fell apart on the next earnings call. Uh, you don't. This one's becoming the uh, intuitive surgical after hours of uh, massive moves. Um, it looks maybe a little bit. Maybe the volatility is starting to come out of it in this $90 price range. Uh, again, they make a lot of robots. They're not just that Roomba thing. They make a lot of industrial robots and been doing fairly well. Also, that same day, we've got Texas Instruments, TXN. Uh, this is always kind of a slow time for uh, consumer electronics. Uh, and, of course, they sell the glue uh, for a lot of products that is kind of uh, lower dollar, lower margin products, which they have a lot of, are going to see uh, close to a close below the three by three today. And if you get that, then you want to start looking on whether or not uh, the SMHs can hold up uh, either. To me, all of these look rather weak. The SMHs, of course, uh, testing the previous high on Ju uh, July 1st at 9 million shares with just 3.7 million shares on the 15th, this goes back to the gap down at about 7 million shares. So it does look like you're pretty much the risk reward, probably pretty tough on it, SMHs right now and everything. We'll look at MU when we come back, but all of them look like they're pretty much uh, uh, massively open hot. We'll be back.
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Uh, we were talking about the SMHs here at the end. We're off uh, 11 and a half points. On the S&P cash, Dow's down 63, NASDAQ, which spent a lot of the earlier morning, I'm, I'm going to call it close to flat, down 13, 13 and a half points. Russell, been weak, the weakest of the bunch, down another 7 and a half today. Uh, as we spoke earlier, volume is fairly light, uh, just about 4 billion shares now, but I expect all that volume uh, to come in one way or the other before Friday. Uh, dollar index is down about 17 cents, 96.86. Got a question in the email about that. Just looks to me like the government's uh, and the Treasury and the rest of them all working pretty hard to keep that dollar around that 96 to 98 area. Uh, but uh, this seems uh, uh, too stuck in there to think that that's market forces. It certainly looks like that going on anyway as we said a couple earnings after the bell tonight uh, hang on uh, with Tom O'Brien to go through that for Netflix IBM eBay United Rentals Alcoa handful of others and of course tomorrow morning a little bit more so we're gonna see some action how much kind of tough to tell uh, options continue to say that we're gonna close lower by Friday uh, how much is probably gonna be dependent on how bad uh, or good the earnings are, but the last uh, day of earnings have been incredibly muted 
which tells me that the earnings are good, but probably not as good as the whisper numbers tell us. I suspect that Microsoft's whisper numbers cannot get hit. So I don't know if it goes down a buck or two or five bucks or 10 bucks, but I think it does close lower on Friday. So that kind of wraps up uh, my market call for the time. Uh, as we said, uh, hang on uh, with Tom O'Brien in the next couple hours. Uh, at the four o'clock hour, we'll see a few more of those earnings come out. And that'll be about it. Anyway, light volume, but uh, markets do pull back on light volume too, is what I'm thinking. Sell when you can, not when you have to. Here, tomorrow, same bat channel, same bat time.